Hello and welcome to this video, Best Practices for Recovering Enterprise Vault. My name is Phil Walters, I'm a consultant working for a company called Adeptech. Let's start off by considering what we're going to cover in this video. So we're going to start briefly by looking at how we rebuild an Enterprise Vault server. Then we're going to talk about data synchronization. The key to recovering Enterprise Vault data is understand how all the data is synchronized or needs to be synchronized. So we'll spend some time on that. Then we'll concentrate on how specifically to get indexes back in sync, then how to get storage back in sync using a tool called EVSVR. So first of all, rebuilding an Enterprise Vault server. This is actually very straightforward these days because generally all the data is not stored on the Enterprise Vault server, but on maybe a SAN or some other storage area. In the old days, everything was on the same EV server, including SQL, and then it was very challenging to rebuild the whole EV server. So if all the storage is elsewhere, then all we need to do is build a new server with the same name, install the same version of EV, that's important, when you run the Enterprise Vault configuration wizard, it will detect that the server already exists within the directory database of the same name, and it will connect that server to that configuration, and the Enterprise Vault services will be repaired. Well, they call it repaired, but really they're added to your server. You then have a working server using the, the previous configuration. But the difficult thing about recovering Enterprise Vault is when the data becomes out of sync. We have data in three different places in Enterprise Vault. First, we have the SQL databases, the most important ones being the directory database containing the configuration, the Vault Store group databases or fingerprint databases that contain the hashes of archived items, and the Vault Store database that contain metadata of archived items. We then have the Vault Store partitions, which are usually just folders and files that contain the actual archived items. And then finally, we have the indexes would be stored somewhere else. And once again, our folders and files. Now, in a recovery situation, we may need to recover one of these back to a different state from the others. So, for instance, if the SQL server completely fails, then we recover the previous backup. Then SQL is earlier than the vault store partitions and indexes. And then we have a problem. So we need to somehow or other get them back into sync. And that's what we're going to talk about now. So first of all, let's talk about what happens when the indexes get out of sync. If the indexes are older than storage, that means the vault store contains items that are not in the index, then that's fine. That's how EV works normally, in that storage is ahead of indexing. So the indexing service will just automatically get the index up to date. It's something it does when the indexing service starts and periodically it will check all the archives to see whether there are items that need to be indexed and it will just do it. However, if the indexes are newer than storage, so this is a bit odd, if the indexes contain items that are not within the vault store, this will lead to failed index volumes. So this is obviously quite serious. It could lead to all your index volumes becoming failed and therefore nobody can do any searches. We're going to look a little bit later at how we would actually fix that. Let's now think about the SQL databases. So if the vault store database is older than the directory database, then obviously items in the directory database don't have corresponding entries in the vault store database. This could lead to users getting strange behavior within Outlook and can be fixed using EVSVR. If the other way around, if the directory database is older than the vault store database, either items in the vault store database that are not in the directory database, once again, we can get strange behavior, but this can be fixed by EVSVR. So what happens if the vault store database and the partitions are out of sync? So this is quite a common scenario if you're recovering, for instance, SQL or you're recovering the Vault Store partition. So first of all, if the Vault Store database is older than the Vault Store partition, that means there are save sets in the Vault Store partition that don't have corresponding records in SQL, then that can be fixed by VSVR, as we'll talk about a bit later. We can rebuild those records in SQL from the information in the Vault Store partition or from the actual archived items. 
However, the vault store partition is older than the vault store, then records in the vault store do not have corresponding records in the partition. In this case, there's no way that we can recreate those archived items. All that we can do is use EVSVR to remove the SQL records, i.e. the orphaned records, but we can't create save sets. So how do we get the indexes into sync with storage? Well, as I've already said, if, the out, if you've got out-of-date indexes, they should be synchronized automatically. If that doesn't happen automatically, then you can force a synchronization using the Manage Indexes tool. For newer indexes and storage, then the best option is to restore an earlier backup of the indexes. This will mean that your indexes won't fail. Then if you fix storage, the indexing service will automatically index those items. The only other option is to rebuild the indexes using the Manage Indexes tool. And if you have a very large amount of data in your archives, which have failed indexes, that could take a very long time, particularly if, for instance, the journal archive is involved. So let's talk a bit about EVSVR. It stands for Enterprise Vault Storage, Verify and Repair, and it's a command line utility which can report on, verify and repair Enterprise Vault storage. It's important to understand that full details about this tool can be found in the Enterprise Vault Utilities Guide. And I strongly recommend that if you're going to run this tool, that you read the documentation carefully before you proceed. And there's a lot of information in there about best practice. So when you run up the tool, you need to be logged on as the Vault Service account. You need to run the command prompt as administrator. And the first thing you're going to type is edit. And you'll get this interface come up. This is the operations interface. And what we're doing is selecting what we want to process, what we want to do, and so on. And those settings are going to be saved in an XML file, which is then going to be fed back into EVSVR. And then we're going to start processing that XML file. So in the top part, you can see what to process. So you need to decide, do you want to process everything, i.e. all your vault store groups, or just specific vault store groups, vault stores, or partitions? So you can select as appropriate. Next, we have what to do. So the three options or three operations, the report, which is really just if you want to, for instance, know how many save sets are on a vault store partition, then the report will tell you that. Verifies the operation that you're going to use. If you want to verify, for instance, whether all the database references are, are there, if you're in a situation where the vault store databases and the vault store partition are out of sync. The other one is repair. So repair is quite a serious option. It can make ch changes to your SQL databases. So you need to be very careful before you run it. At the bottom, there are two important options, particularly if you're going to process a very large amount of data. So checkpointing will enable it so that you can pause EVSVR, or if there's ever an issue with it, it will restart from where it left off. So if you are processing a very large data set, then it's probably worth switching on checkpointing. You can also specify the number of threads. So if everything in storage is broken currently, then you want to process it as quickly as possible. So I'd recommend increasing the number of threads from one to maybe one thread per CPU of your box. So what does the repair operation do? It can do a number of things. It can use the vault store objects, i.e. the items in the vault store partition, to repair the records within the vault store database and between vault store databases and fingerprint databases. It can blacklist any sys parts that don't verify correctly, so that what this will do is it will force the archiving agent, if it sees that sys part again, to archive a new version. It deletes the vault store and fingerprint database records that are associated with missing items in the vault store partition. It recreates any missing save sets and syspart records in the vault store or fingerprint databases. It can recreate any missing archive and archive folder information in the vault store databases when the corresponding information exists in the directory database or the other way around. So some best practice for using EVSVR. 
always run a verify before a repair. And before you're running a repair, always back up your SQL databases so you have a valid backup you can go back to if something goes wrong. You have to put all your vault stores into backup mode before running a repair. It forces you to do that. And I strongly recommend you read the log files after running each verify or repair carefully for advice. There is information often embedded right at the end of the file which will tell you what you need to run next. Finally, if you have to run a repair, I recommend that you contact Veritas Technical Support before you start doing it to get their advice. So finally, I'd recommend you check out the separate demonstration vid video that shows you how to recover Enterprise Vault data. So that brings us to the end of this short video on best practice for recovering Enterprise Vault. Thank you very much.